What about us moments to downtown Ray Mello? You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, February 10th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com, we have iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and they'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. The Korean dark comedy Parasite was named Best Picture at the Academy of Arts Gala in Los Angeles Sunday night. It also earned the honors for Best International Film, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Director for Bong Joon-ho. It is the first non-English language movie to take the top honor, and Ho is the first Korean filmmaker to win the Best Director Prize. Ho said, offering to break up his Best Director trophy and get pieces to his fellow nominees Sam Mendes, Todd Phillips, Martin Scorsese, and Quentin Tarantino. Just to be nominated was a huge honor. I never thought I would win. He says, if the Academy allows, I would like to get a te- Texas Chainsaw, split the award in five, and share it with all of you. Thank you. I will drink until next morning. Thank you. Well, King Phoenix won the Best Actor Oscar for Joker, which also aced the Best Original Score category. Renee Zellweger was named Best Actress for Judy. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at star, Brad Pitt won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, and Laura Dern took home the Best Supporting Actress trophy for Marriage Story. 1917 picked up the awards for Best Cinematography, Visual Effects, and Sound Mixing, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood won for Best Production Design. Raphead spoke with Good Morning America after winning the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor and said he wants to disappear. Pitt said to GMA's Ron Roberts on Sunday, Now I really think it's high time I go disappear for a while and get back to making things. I look forward to that. Pitt won the Oscar for his role as Cliff Booth in director Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The actor told Roberts that he sees his father in the role. Pitt says, I see my dad in everything I really do. There's a lot of him in Cliff. Uh, just the way he moves, basically. When he gets disgruntled, he's just cool about it. Pitt also says that the this award season, he has felt a lot of responsibility to thank everyone who has helped him in his career. The 56-year-old thanked Tarantino and his co-star, Leonardo DiCaprio, during his acceptance speech. He said on stage, Leo, I'll ride on your coattails any day, man. The view is fantastic. Rapper Eminem performed his 2002 song, Lose Yourself, at Sunday's Academy Awards Gala in Los Angeles. The unexpected moment took place during the segment in the ABC telecast that was introduced by Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda and looked at previous Best Original Song winners. Eminem, whose real name is Marshall Mathers, did not attend the 2003 Oscar ceremony where his 8 Mile Anthem won the Best Original Song statuette. The artist tweeted after his performance Sunday, Look, if you had another shot, another opportunity, thanks for having me at the Academy. Sorry it took me 18 years to get here. Director and longtime New York Knicks fan Spike Lee honored the late Los Angeles Lakers legend Kobe Bryant by wearing a custom Kobe Bryant-inspired tuxedo at the 92nd Academy Awards. They wore the purple and gold threads with a pair of Nike Kobe 9 Elite basketball shoes Sunday in Los Angeles. Kobe and his 13-year-old daughter Gianna were among nine who died during a helicopter crash on January 26th in Calabasas, California. Senator Billy Idish also performed yesterday by the Beatles during the Oscars 2020 in memoriam, honoring actors, writers, producers, and other celebrities who have recently died. Kobe's picture was shown first. The big screen read, Life is too short to get boggled down and be discouraged. You have to keep moving. You have to keep growing. Lee Succeeded also had the number two and the number four embroiled on its lapel, referencing to the jersey numbers Kobe wore during his career with the Lakers. The director also had on a purple hat and purple glasses. Red carpet host Ryan Seacrest asked Lee about his suit before the award show. Lee was speechless when Seacrest asked how Lee was doing after Kobe's death. Lee worked with Kobe on his 2009 documentary, Kobe Doing Work. Kobe won an Oscar for his animated short film, Dear Basketball, in 2018. Now they poured and donned a black cape to the Oscars featuring the names of female directors who were not nominated. The names appeared on the side of the cape in gold lettering. The names featured included Greta Gerwig for Little Women, Lulu Wang for The Farewell, and Lorraine uh, Scafaria for Hustlers, among others. Portman said Sunday, 
Uh, I want to recognize the women who are not recognized for their incredible work this year in my subtle way. Portman at the 2018 Golden Globes announced the winner of Best Director by stating, here are the all-male nominees. RuPaul guest hosted Saturday Night Live this weekend and gave cast member Pete Davidson's recurring uh, character chat a drag makeover. In the pre-recorded video, RuPaul was all glammed up for a photo shoot when he decided it was time to let someone else bask in the spotlight. For some reason, the unenthusiastic Chad, who was in the room where the photo shoot took place, caught RuPaul's eyes. Ru uh, RuPaul told Chad, there's something dynamic about you, boy, to which the younger man replied, okay, then tried a gown, heels, and makeup at RuPaul's direction. RuPaul says, there's a queen inside of you, Chad. All she needs is a crown, challenging him to lip sync for your life. Chad said, okay, taking the stage, making a little attempt to dazzle before walking off and falling into a food table. RuPaul asked Chad, do you want to be the greatest uh, drag queen in the world? Chad shrugged, no. His mentor instructed, then turn and walk away. Chad said, okay, bye, Rup Ruppy, leaving the room. Actor comedian Orson Bean died after being struck by two cars while walking in Los Angeles. Police said he was 91. TMZ reported the Equalizer 2, Desperate Housewives, and Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman actor, who was a frequent guest on The Tonight Show and a panelist on To Tell the Truth, was crossing the street in the neighborhood of Venice when he was clipped by one car, then hit by a second. The U.S. Army veteran died at the scene. Police were investigating the incident. The New York Times confirmed the actor's death with the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office. Bean's other credits include Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Seventh Heaven, Bean John Malkovich, Seventh Heaven, and Superstore. He was survived by his wife, Allie Mills, an actress known for a role in The Wonder Years and The Bold is Beautiful. Wow, wow, West. Black Sheep Squadron and Hawaiian Eye star Robert Conrad has died in Malibu. He was 84. Jeff Ballard, a representative for Conrad's survivors, told People.com he lived a wonderful, long life, and while the family saddened by his passing, he will live forever in their hearts. Aaron Tennant tonight said the Chicago native and father of eight died of heart failure on Saturday morning. Conrad appeared in the films Thunder Jets, Murph the Surf, Lady in Red, and Jingle All the Way. His other credits in the series, uh, uh, High Mountain Rangers, Jesse Hawks, and the uh, High Sierra Search and Rescue, and the TV movies Two Fathers Justice, Charlie Hanna, Glory Days, Mary on the Mob, and Sword to Vengeance, Variety said. A private memorial will be set on March 1st, which would have been the actor's 85th birthday. Rabbi Roddy Riches, please excuse me for being anti-social as the number one album in the United States. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 roster, dated Saturday, is Eminem's music to be murdered by... Followed by Billy Eilish's When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, number three, Halsey's Maniac, in number four, and Post Malone's Hollywood's Bleeding, number five. Running up the top tier are Mac Miller's Circle, at number six, The Baby's Kirk, at number seven, Harry Styles' Fine Line, at number eight, Moneybag Yo's Time Servant, number nine, and the Jack Boys' self Tile Album, at number ten. The Mario Roby, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead comic book adaptation, Birds of Prey, is the number one movie in North America, earning $33.3 million in receipts in its opening weekend. Box Office Mojo.com announced on Sunday. Coming in number two with $12 million is Bad Boys for Life, which was previously number one for three weeks, followed by 1917 at number three with $9 million, Doolittle at number four with $6.7 million, and Jumanji, the next level, number five with $5.5 million. Running up the top tier are The Gentleman, number 6, with $4.2 million. Gretel and Hansel, number 7, with $3.5 million. Knives Out, at number 8, with $2.4 million. Little Women, at number 9, uh, with $2.3 million. And Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, at number 10, with $2.2 million. And as your entertainment report for Monday, February 10th, 2020, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.